cooking. I want to make Disney princesses dresses. I'm that kind of freak. I always think, no, don't make them because you're still not ready and you don't have all the knowledge about pattern making and pattern drafting and all these things. But this is the year I get over that fear. I have six weddings. One of them is mine and I'm determined to make dresses. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna imagine that all the Disney princesses are living today and they are invited to a wedding. Wedding of one of them, I'm not gonna reveal which one yet. I'm gonna try every month create a dress based on a Disney princess. In each dress I want to learn a new skill and I want to experiment and see what I can do. I want you all to understand that I'm an engineer and my creative mind is not as creative as most people, so things are not going to be crazy. They are just going to be crazily organized. Today's princess is going to be Belle from The Beauty and the Beast. Okay, first things first, we're gonna watch The Beauty and the Beast, just for research purposes. See the dress? This is a skirt with a lot of layers and then you have the corset here. I want to maintain all these layers but I think I'm gonna do a gather skirt but with some tiers. And then at the top I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do. I have some options. I'm going to do some drawings and I'm gonna show you. I'm still a little bit confused on how I'm going to do everything but I have two designs in mind for the skirt. For the top part I haven't decided yet. I have either a layered skirt so it has different tears but they are separate from each other or a gather skirt with tears that they are all attached to each other. I have these two fabrics. I know, don't freak out. I know it's white and I know Belle's dress is yellow. We're going to do some things later. My idea is that I want to dye them with turmeric but that's gonna be something for the future. For now, let's let's put our focus on making the dress. The first option is cotton. It's, kind of, it's a cotton that you put in the pockets of your jeans or in the pockets of, you know, very thin. It's cheap because I know I'm gonna make a mess and I I don't know what to spend a lot of money making this dress. The second one is poplin, which is, oh, oh I have to pre-wash the fabric. <sighs> well, the second fabric is poplin that it's also 100% cotton. The problem is that it's a bit more sturdy and I don't know if I like that for the skirt because it has to have a little bit of flounce it's called and I don't think this is the way to go. This is the kind of skirt I want to attempt to do like this one. I wanted to have four or five tiers but that it goes to my ankles. So what I'm gonna do is here I have the pattern and I'm gonna follow this thing. I pre the fabric, so let's get rid of the wrinkles and let's start patting. I made different samples of how many colors I want on the different tiers and I did it through ratios. So here we have one and a half, we have two, we have two and a half. And I did two for the two and a half, one. Every single time I try to <laughs> fill, oh, I get in the door. Hello. You too, what's up? I just have one second and I'm done. <laughs> we have just a rectangle and in here we have the rectangle but with some things on the side. I don't know if you actually can see a difference or not. I think I'm gonna do it this way just because the book said so. But yeah, I don't see much of the difference. Maybe that this one is more flared on the side. So I think I'm gonna choose the two, two ratio. Now that we've decided that we're gonna go with ratio two, we have to measure my waist and then do the calculation. And if I do the calculations, it's a lot of numbers. So I'm gonna do four tiers. My waist is around 75 centimeters and in each tier I have to do double than the one before. 1,200 meters, something like that. So I'm gonna need around eight tiers of this and then I'm gonna touch them together. We have the eight tiers done. Now I'm gonna overlock the sides and start putting them together. Gathers is something I really hate. <laughs> so I don't know why I decided to gather every single tier. Ha! 
Hi, I miscalculated and I think I need like a thousand meters more. I just took the first year as if it was my waist measurement and no, my first year is my measurement times two. Here is where we're at, like the hours of gathering the fabric. I think it's too much fabric for my liking, but I don't want to undo it. I think it's going to be too short. I don't like it, but I've cut it already. What am I gonna do? Okay, so the fabric is getting washed again because I had to buy it again. So what I'm going to do now is just start with the top. I've been thinking about it and I'm just gonna go full princess. I'm gonna do princess seams and princess neckline and I want some bows here at the top and I'm not 100% sure of how I want it. So I'm gonna do a test and see if I like it, if I would change something or if I would not change something. The other option that I had was with a lot of gathers, but I think there's more than enough gathers there. I also have to say that I hate gathers, not how they look, but making them because they're pain in here. I'm just gonna go plain. I'm gonna try. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't, I can always go back and try again with the gathers. I'm a princess! <laughs> princess neckline, princess seams. Just everything that I'm wearing is princess. I always wanted to be a princess. I made two bows here and then the problem, I thought this would get here and then I would attach the straps there, but I don't like it. So what I think I'm going to do is just cut it through here. So instead of having this and then down, just like that. You see the idea, right? You see it. And this with the skirt and then <laughs> yellow. I'm drying the fabric now because I had to buy more because I messed up the first time. And once it's dry, I'm going to continue with this precious thing that I'm wearing. Uh, the fabric is still drying because I forgot to take it out of the washing machine. What I'm gonna do now is test the color because I bought al aluminum acid. I think that's how it's called, I don't know, because it's in Dutch and I don't know what I bought. I think it's what I had to buy. And what it's used for is to more than the fabric so that the fabric gets all the color that I'm gonna use later and it stays on the fabric and it doesn't wash away. I don't know, I'm gonna do a bunch of testing and see which one I like the most. I bought this course a long time ago and what it said was that you have to add 10% of this aluminum acid of the weight of your fabric and I added 10 grams of fabric so I added one gram of this aluminum thing. And then I leave it boiling for an hour or so. And before doing that, I washed the fabric. I just looped at the curcuma and they are completely rotten. So I'm gonna go to the shop and buy a bit more. We're back. I want to try two techniques. One is how it looks like with the roots. So I'm going to dye the pieces with the roots and the other one is with curcuma powder. I have this here. I don't wanna have yellow fingers. I'm gonna grind it until I have enough powder to dye them. It's already so yellow. It smells earthy. I want to do two tests. One, put the same amount of root or powder as the amount of fabric that I have. And another one with half of the amount because I've seen in other videos that it's a little bit orange. And then I'm going to use one of the fabrics that I use the aluminum mustard and another one that it's just been resting with water. Now I'm gonna leave it on the stove boiling for 45 minutes or one hour. And after that, I'm going to probably let it soak in even more color. And I'm gonna do a second round of colors just to see how it looks like. We're back in the game. We have a thousand meters of fabric attached together. So let's cut them and gather them. First layer is done. Oh, it's so pretty, it's so much better than before. Look at this. It falls perfectly. It doesn't go like, you know, it just falls. Layer two is done. This year I'm gonna be a princess. Fourth layer is done. It looks gorgeous. <laughs> I would like it to be a little bit more flowy, but it is cotton at the end of the day. So cotton is sturdy and there's not much I can do. But yeah, I'm gonna put it in the mannequin there and I'm gonna see how it looks like because I want to add some things on the skirt 
and I'll put it there while I work on the top. Say hello to my mannequin with this four layers of skirt now the next thing i want to do if you have Belle's dress in mind the cartoon version it has something here on the skirt and i want to do something like that but completely different <laughs> i have this lace here and i want to kind of do that shape but i just saw i don't have enough lace so i was thinking start here i think that's gonna ruin the skirt i was envisioning something like insertion lace so then this would be transparent and you would have this piece here but with all the colors maybe it's not a good idea let's leave it like this for now because i don't want to mess it up samples are done i'm gonna let them dry here and i'm gonna show you once they're dry how they look like now we can make the decision of which one we're gonna use if we look at the powder one with 100 percent of the weight very nice and yellow but I haven't washed this yet and I think they're very soft yellow. I don't know if this is gonna look as nice when I wash it. Then we have the one that I dyed with the roots and you can see some speckles in little places. I like little, you know, tiny things. And if we compare one and the other one with 100% of the weight, they are both the same kind of color. For the roots, I had to add a little bit more, but not a lot more. I did it again with the powder only, and I added 200% of the weight, so double the weight of the fabric. It's a very nice color, very strong. The only thing is that this one wasn't swimming in the pot that freely, and you can see there's a weird change of color here. But I don't think it's such a big problem. I think it gives it this natural look and I'm not upset about it. And after dyeing it, I washed the other sample and it lost the color a little bit. It's the same color as the sample of 100%. Next up is the body. Prototype number two, hopefully not a prototype and the final piece. I finished the top and the bottom. I messed up a little bit, just a little bit, but I don't dislike it. These straps at the back, I wanted them to go straight, but I attached them in an angle. That's how they look like right now. And now that we have the dress here, we can choose the color. So this is half the amount of the fabric, this is 100% of the amount of the fabric, and this is 200% the amount of the fabric. Let's remember that this one, when we wash it, becomes this one. I really like this one, it's so pretty. I had this in my head for the past year. I've been wanting to make this dress for a year, so insane that I'm making it now, finally. The top is attached to the bottom. I haven't attached the zipper yet because I wanted to try it on first. And there are some things that I can see. This here, that maybe a dart would help. If I'm like this, the dress fits me perfectly. If I'm like this, then it when it opens a little bit. I fixed it on this side, I just did one centimeter from each side in. Moment of truth, we're gonna weigh the dress to see how much of everything we have to put. 422 grams. I'm going to need 42 grams of alloin. I put it in the biggest container that I have. I don't know if it's going to be enough because I don't have a place to boil it. What I did was put the hottest water I could find in my house. I boiled all the aluin together and then I poured it there. Little update, I don't think I'm going to be able to double the amount of curcuma per fabric because curcuma is really expensive. All the curcuma powder and the curcuma roots, we have 439. So we're gonna do what we can. Making a mess, ow, boiling water. Okay, we're gonna bring it and we're gonna put the dress in there. And now it's time to pray and to have yellow fingers for the rest of my life. Moment of truth, I'm going to see <laughs> what came out of here. The water kind of stopped coming out yellow. The only thing that I see is that this is full of powder. Like you can see it here, see? I'm going to put it straight away in the wash and I don't know if I should be doing that or not, but I will do it because then all the centrifugal forces are going to remove all the water. It's a bit of an orangey look for now. 
Look at my baby. By the way, I just realized that I might have been saying I'm using curcuma to dye the dress. Curcuma is the Dutch word for turmeric. So I'm using turmeric. It's just because in the label it says curcuma. I've been saying curcuma, but it's turmeric, okay? Moment of truth. <laughs> I'm gonna try it and let's look at it tomorrow. Look at her. Look at her. She's not. She's pretty. I'm showing it to you on the mannequin because as it happens, yellow is my favorite color, but it's not in my color palette. So when I put it on, because I have kind of yellowish skin, it looks horrible on me. And in white, it looked gorgeous. And in yellow, it just looks like it's a costume. So the turmeric did not go in some area and of course it had to choose the most visible areas like here at the front or here on the side or in the skirt on the sides and at the front but overall i think it did a really good job very happy and i can't wait to make more princesses and now that we have the dress done let's go look for the best one last thing if you want to see more pictures of it follow me on instagram my handle is underscore nuriamo and i'll see you guys in the next one bye we're on the lookouts for the beast. The beast should be around here. We couldn't find the beast. <laughs> we're gonna take pictures anyway. So it's starting to rain. So. <laughs>